A little while ago, I talked about this Rust library. I'm trying to contribute this pull request to implement an offset algorithm for line strings. In an effort to sort of transition back onto working on this, I wanted to have a go at implementing the algorithm in Blender geometry nodes. I'm gonna just do a tour of the existing nodes. I'm not going to try to attempt to build these nodes as like a performance. Okay, so let's zoom in right here at the input. So here's where we take in our mesh geometry. And the mesh that we're using is just this ring of vertices and edges. But it's a little bit difficult to see for the video, so I spent some time making this nice previewer. So if I turn that on, we get to see the vertex numbers and the edge numbers, which is going to be very useful later on. The first thing that the process actually does is split edges. So I can switch on this next previewer here, and the edges haven't moved, so everything's overlapping. You can see that the vertex numbers are kind of overlapping because each vertex is duplicated now and kind of separated. After that, we need to figure out how to displace each of these little edge segments. So to do that, we use this block over here, offset segments. And the first step is to figure out the edge travel now, the edge travel is a name that I've given to, I guess, each of these blue vectors here. So if you start from uh, vertex number five here and you go to vertex number six, that vector is the edge travel of edge number zero. And all it is is this edge vertices node where it takes position one and position two of the two vertices and subtracts them and sends them to the output. So that's what edge travel is. Now, if we normalize the edge travel, we get a vector which is in the direction of the edge, but has a length of one unit. We can then rotate that vector 90 degrees around the Z axis, which is that the Z axis is coming out of the page. So that's just rotating it around on the page. And we can scale it. Now, in this case, we're going to scale it by the offset distance, which is our input to this whole node setup. So you can see here, if I enable the output here, the offset distance is being multiplied with that rotated edge direction and then added to the position of the existing edge. So, yep, we set the position using that scaled rotated normal and then we get our output, which looks like this. Pretty neat. But now everything's all disconnected. So how can we go about fixing that? Well, I guess what we want to do is find a, the intersection point of each of these subsequent edges. So I'll skip ahead to what the solution looks like and just switch this on. So each of these little orange points here are the intersection of adjacent edges. And then we want to kind of rebuild our mesh using those orange points. So how do we get the orange points? Well, I have a previous video called Line Segment Intersection, and I'll put a link to it up in the card. And basically, this is that algorithm. So if you have two line segments here, A, B, C, D, and you're looking for the intersection point P, you can use this algorithm. So the first thing you have to do is find all, all of these, these sections. So A, B is the vector from A to B. So that's just the edge travel. And we want C, D. So that's the edge travel, but using not the edge index, but the looping edge index. So let's see what that looks like. So it's basically the index plus one modulo, which is the remainder when you divide by number of edges in our input. So if we have zero, one, two, three, four edges, this index will be zero, and this looping edge index will be one. But then when index is four, this looping edge index will loop over and be zero. So this A, B, and C, D will be the edge four, and then C, D will be zero. Now over here, we need to find A, C. So all we're doing is taking the position one of, in this case, the looping edge index edge, and then position one of just the index edge. That's going to be, uh, let's see, if index is zero then it would take vertex number five would be a the looping edge index would be one and so this would take the position of vertex number one over here 
then it just subtracts them because we're interested in the vector here from A to C. Once we've found A, C, A, B, C, D, we can move on to finding something called T1. So in the calculation for T1, we're going to use something which I call the 2D cross product. It's not really the cross product because that's not defined in two dimensions. We basically separate the two input vectors, then we do this multiplication. So we go X1 multiplied by Y2, and then we take this other one here, Y1 multiplied by X2, and we subtract them from each other and send that to the output. This is AC, so we're doing the cross product of AC with CD, and then the cross product of AB with CD again, and then we're dividing one by the other. Once we have T1, we can use it to scale AB, and then we're gonna add the result back to our position A, and that is our intersection point. For more information on how this is derived, please do check out my previous video on that subject. Now that we've calculated the intersection point, we have a bit of a problem. How do we actually assign it to the geometry? Because we, we can't just set the position of the vertices up here because we've calculated one intersection point per edge. So to solve that problem, we're gonna store an attribute on the edge domain. Now, I'd love to actually show you what that means by adding in a viewer node here, but it doesn't work. The viewer is supposed to show us a table of all of these edges. If the table would include another column, in this case, called intersection. Blender seems to be a bit broken. We, we can't see that. Trust me that we've added some columns to the edge table, and the column name is intersection, and it contains our intersection point. So now that each edge remembers the intersection point it's associated with, we can use this node here called mesh to points. We can tell it that we want to convert each edge to a point. What that will do is create a point at the midpoint of the edge. If I turn on the viewer connected to the output of mesh to points, we see something that looks like this. So now our old mesh, which is shown in sort of semi-transparent, has been converted into these orange points. Now all we have to do is take the attribute which is stored on these points and move the position of these points to that attribute. That's happening over here. Here we're retrieving the named attribute called intersection and we're using the set position node to set those points to that position. So if I go back and I enable the viewer attached to set position, we can see that we've ended up with these points now in their proper intersection location. You might wonder, why are we doing points to vertices? Because we could just leave them as points. Well, it turns out we need it to be vertices. Otherwise, this next bit doesn't work for some reason. The next trick is, how do we connect them? Because I don't think there is an operator that can just connect a series of vertices. So what I came up with is to actually start by generating a little curve with the same number of vertices to generate a circle curve with the same uh, number of points. Here it's plugging point count into resolution. We can then use the sample index node, which will sample the attributes of these orange points to set the position on the circle curve points. That way we end up with a curve which is now being positioned over the top of our points. From here, we can easily convert a curve to a mesh. So that's what happens next. And you can see we get our arrows back. And of course, we can bring back our original geometry so we can see what's happened. So if I grab it, you can see it moves around. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. So I do need to warn you that this method is super sketchy and unreliable. And that's because it's very easy to upset it. For example, if I select our mesh and I go subdivide, okay, we have a subdivided mesh. Looks like it's working, doesn't it? And then I grab, oh my goodness, what is going on? We've lost consecutiveness in our mesh and it's pretty difficult to get it back. Maybe there could be like a, like a plugin or a script that could clean this up, but doing it by hand is extremely difficult. Okay, so how can we fix this up? Let's go back to the beginning here and just show the input geometry. So that's the whole reason I created this nice previewer node, because it's gonna give us this visual indication of what's gone wrong. So see how the edge goes zero, two, four, one, three? That's not gonna work. 
So I'm going to go into edge edit mode and select zero and two. The selection is not going to show up. And then I'm going to go into mesh and go into sort elements and click reverse. So in that way, I was able to swap two and zero. So I'll do a little time lapse of me swapping stuff. There we go. As you can see, now that the edges are reordered, everything is working the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, it's kind of unavoidable. The algorithm does require the edges to be ordered and Blender typically doesn't order the edges automatically, I guess. I, I did try to add a piece to this video where I describe what's going on inside this nice viewer thing, but it is, it is quite complicated. <laughs> So if, if you are interested in that and you'd like to see how I accomplished this, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments and I, I can maybe show you how I used sign distance fields and shaders and all the rest of it to achieve those numbers and stuff. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.